What up, though, everybody? Welcome back to Shots of Brown. I am your host, yours truly, Shane Brown, a.k.a. Shizzy. Today, I got a dope-ass story, man. Real dope, dope-ass story. Legendary story. This one... Music-wise, this was definitely, like, one of the best things that happened to me, like, musically, in, in, in my whole pursuit of chasing the music dream and all that shit. First time I ever recorded a record with Auntie Whitney, a.k.a. Whitney Houston. Long live the GOAT, the voice, love you, Auntie, miss you. Very first time recording a record with Whitney Houston, Auntie Whitney. This was like the fucking, one of the highlights of my life. So we in the studio. As y'all know, if you're new to the channel, I'm, the ne I'm Shane Brown, the nephew of Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston. Come from the Brown family. Um, all my life I've been, you know, touring with Uncle Bobby and recording music with him. I uh, really started getting really into it, like around like 13, my teens. Um, started a group with my cousins called the Brown Bombers. Um, it was uh, a few of my few of my other cousins. Um, one in particular is my aunt Lily's son Kelsey. Um, so we was all in the studio this night. We with Uncle B. We was recording a record called Love Thing. Love Thing was like a, um, it was like, it was a hip hop record with an R&B hook on it. So we rapped on it, me and my cousins and my uncle Bobby, Bobby Brown laid the hook on the record. We in the studio vibing, drinking. Mind you, we had the studio in the mansion at this time, at the mansion in Alpharetta. So we in the studio vibing, um, all the nephews, Uncle B, we in there kicking our shit, drinking, smoking, you know. Regular studio shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, music blasting, we playing the record. We in there laughing and shit. Next thing we hear, we see Auntie Whitney walk in the room. We hear her singing. She's singing. She's ad-libbing over the hook that Uncle Bobby laid on the record. She ad-libbing and riffing over the, over the record. That shit was sounding so fucking... Sounding like angels bro that shit was so yo it was, it was so beautiful so everybody in the room was looking like at that point all the room all the all eyes on auntie whitney as soon as she walked in the room singing so everybody looking and we like hell yeah damn auntie that shit sound good that, yeah, that's dope so she like yeah that's a dope ass record i love that record y'all got one y'all got one whoop -de whoop so we talking she's like let me go in the booth and show y'all how it's done so when she said that, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> we just got Auntie Whitney, Whitney Houston, the voice, the GOAT. I mean, like the fucking best female artist of all times to damn bless our record. There's some of her, piss, her peers who's in the industry who never even got this treatment. Know what I'm saying? So... I'm on it. I'm like, yo, motherfuckers pay hundreds and hundreds of thousands for to, for for uh, a record with Whitney Whitney Houston. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on it, bro. And I'm like, damn. I was like, I felt like I made it at that point. I got a a stamp of approval from Whitney Houston, the goat. So shit, we all like, go ahead, Auntie, do your shit. She go in the studio. She ad living, riffing behind Uncle Bobby. She's singing some of the hook with him. That shit was so fucking magical and dope, bro. It was just like a dope ass experience to be in the studio, not with just Bobby Brown, but with Whitney Houston at the same time. And to actually have both of them, both of their vocals on the same record. There's not a lot of people who have the same, those those vocals on the same record from those, I mean, 
from Uncle B and Auntie Whitney. So that shit was just dope as hell. And I mean, me and my cousins and shit, we like, you know, of course it was regular to Uncle B, you know what I'm saying? But me and my cousins, we in there, we like, oh shit, we got one. We got Uncle B and Auntie Whitney on the record. Auntie Whitney just came and blessed our record and stamped it and said, we, we got one. This shit is dope. We just, I mean, it was like Auntie Whitney just gave us that that approval. Like, you know what I mean, y'all, y'all won y'all shit. And that's one thing about Auntie Whitney, though, that I, that I love about her. She always supported, you know what I'm saying? Like, anything Brown family related, she knew we all did music, you know what I'm saying? And she loved all our music. She would damn, every time we got recorded some shit, I mean, obviously, Uncle B would be blasting it in the crib. But Auntie Whitney, she'll be vibing, blasting that shit. She'll be playing my, she would be playing my shit. I would be at my grandmother's house. She'll be playing my records. She'll call me. Shiz, what the hell you need? Boy, you got some fucking records. These records is dope. I didn't know you was, your shit was like this, blah, say, blah. You need to start taking your shit more serious, boom, boom, boom. I mean, and be talking shit like that. And she used to say to she was just, she used to say, even around Uncle B, y'all Uncle B, Bobby ain't gonna he ain't gonna fucking help y'all with y'all shit for real. <laughs> he ain't taking his own career serious. Y'all need to go on and, and 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 do other things. And um, we be like, nah, Auntie, Unc got us and shit, Unc got us. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, it was just the it was just the fucking just to be around two goats and two of the greatest that ever done it just the experience of even like i don't even i'm glad i never made it in the industry i'm glad i, I never made it with the music shit i'm um it wasn't really i mean it wasn't meant for me to but just the experience of being around two goats touring with uncle b and fucking just seeing everything that we seen and doing that shit we done those memories right there man i can um I can write a book on, but, um, yeah, so Auntie Whitney, she go in the booth and she blow that shit down. I mean, she killed that shit. I mean, like, so quick, like, too, like, like it was easy. You know what I'm saying? She went in there, one take, boom, 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 did her shit, killed it. Everybody, while she in the booth, everybody like, oh my God, we got one. And, um, man, the, the record was just so fucking... It was just so fucking dope. Like, it was a dope-ass record before Auntie Whitney got on it. But when Auntie Whitney got on it, it was like the cherry on top. You know what I'm saying? She just killed it. And when she came out the booth, we like, damn, Auntie. Damn, you killed that shit. Blah, blah, blah. We're like, damn, thank you, Auntie. Thank you. She's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? She, I mean, brushed it off. It was like, it was nothing. But it was just a fucking... I don't even know if she, she probably didn't even know what that meant to, to us. You know what I'm saying? Um, it would always been, you know, we never really looked at Auntie Whitney as that, in that light, but just to be in the, for us to be in that lane of doing music and to get that approval from one of the best to ever touch a microphone. It was just like, nigga felt like he made it for real. <laughs> for real, for real, you know what I'm saying? That shit was like a major, that was like a like a major key for real. So that was just a dope night, man. And that was like early 2000, that was like early 2000s, 2003, 2004. That was around the time when, um. You know, we was doing um, Thug Lovin' and, you know, the whole uh, Uncle B and Ja Rule and Murder Inc. shit. You know what I'm saying? We was real heavy and into damn recording and touring at that time. Uncle B wasn't really, he wasn't really dropping no records at that time. But he was, you know, other than that Thug Lovin', but shit, he was on, we was on, on the road all the goddamn time touring. But just that memory there, just being in the studio recording that um, record love thing with Auntie Whitney, man, was just a was a was a classic fucking memory. Um, my aunt Lily, my cousin Kelsey, he got the record. He he got everything backed up from everything we did. I know, damn, 
he got so much unreleased music that we got when, that we did with Uncle B. He got so much unreleased Uncle B shit. I'm pretty sure he got some unreleased Auntie Whitney shit. We gonna go back and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna highlight him about um, going back in the archive and getting some of these records and just sam. I mean, you know, just dropping these dropping these records and letting y'all hear some of this shit. If um, I'm gonna get him on here, we gonna chop it up on that. But yeah, that was just my story of recording, man. My first time recording with the goat. My first and only time recording with the goat. I don't think we ever recorded. No, we ain't never have a song with Auntie Whitney after that. That was the only song that we had with Auntie Whitney was Love Thing. And um, shit. We would have put that motherfucker out back then. Shit. It would have been crazy. It would have definitely been crazy. But long live the GOAT. Long live Auntie Whitney. We love you. We miss you. Gone, never forgotten. Everybody who's watching, all Auntie Whitney fans, drop a comment below. Tell me one of your favorite Whitney Houston memories. The first time you heard one of her records on the radio. The first time you seen her in concert. Just drop a good Whitney Houston memory in honor of her. Long live Auntie Whitney. We love you. We miss you. Till next time, y'all. Shots of brown, baby.